when your parents told you that you were going to get a sibling that you were going to become an elder sibling have you ever wondered will it be a baby brother or a sister of course you must have right but have you wondered what makes a baby or a person a male and what makes them a female well the answer to it lies entirely within the chromosomes in the cells you know that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes right so totally 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs of these 23 pairs 22 of them are known as autosomes and this is a homologous pair of chromosomes about which we have learned extensively in this pair you receive one from your father and one from your mother so there are 22 such autosomes that are of the same shape and size the last set of chromosomes in our cells is the sex chromosomes and we have one pair of sex chromosomes are you wondering why i have not drawn them drawn the sex chromosomes well that's because they look slightly different in a few cases what do i mean by that this is how the two sex chromosomes look like in females and males females have two x chromosomes uh, originally they were known as x bodies when scientists didn't know what it was later it was found out that they were chromosomes and hence they were known as x chromosomes so females have two x chromosomes of the same size and shape but males have only one x chromosome the other is a smaller chromosome that's called y so if you have two x chromosomes then that would make you female if you have one x and one y chromosome that would make you a male so this is how sex is determined in human beings when gametes are being formed in the case of females the gametes could have either this x chromosome or this x chromosome right it depends on the law of independent assortment in the case of males the gametes could have either this x chromosome but this y chromosome they cannot have another x you know that females produce one egg during the process of ovulation right so that egg could have either this x chromosome or this x chromosome but in the case of males millions of sperm are present in the ejaculate right in that mixture 50% of sperm could have the x chromosome while the remaining 50% could have the y chromosome so when an x chromosome containing sperm fuses with the egg that's going to result in xx and these zygotes are going to develop into females and when the y chromosome containing sperm is fusing with the egg cell that's going to give the combination xy and these zygotes are going to develop into males so you see because there are 50% x chromosome containing sperm and 50% y chromosome containing sperm there is a 50% chance that the offspring is going to be a girl and a 50% chance that the offspring is going to be a boy there is equal chance that the baby is going to be a boy or a girl from this it is clear that it is the males that determine the sex of the children because they have one x and one y chromosome and not the females due to a lot of misconceptions women have been blamed throughout history for producing female children and not male heirs that is a complete misinformation and it is the male partners or the fathers that determine the sex of the children in humans and not the mothers or the female partners so here you go if you're having a sibling 50% chance that it's going to be a sister 50% chance that it's going to be a brother with this let's move on to sex determination in honey bees which is way more interesting than sex determination in humans trust me why is sex determination in honey bees more interesting than the one in human beings that's because they don't have any sex chromosomes they don't have x or y chromosomes in their cells that helps in determining the gender then how is sex determined in honey bees before we answer that here are some facts about the different honey bees in a bee hive there are three types of honey bees in any bee hive there is one queen bee her majesty the main role or the main job of the queen bee is to produce eggs that can be fertilized there are about 50000 to 80000 female worker bees the role of the female worker bees is mainly to go out and collect nectar produce honey 
tend to the hive, tend to the offspring, etc. They can also produce eggs, but these eggs never get fertilized. Apart from this, they can be hundreds to thousands of male drones, male drone bees. Their job is to produce sperm. Their only job is to produce sperm, which would then fertilize with the egg to give rise to offspring. Now, how does that happen? Female worker bees and the queen bee, they are the only diploid organisms in the hive. So, all females are diploid in a hive. They have 32 chromosomes in 16 pairs. So, the queen bee can produce eggs by the process of meiosis because she is diploid. The male bees, the drones are always haploid. They have only 16 chromosomes. Their cells have only 16 chromosomes. They can never undergo meiosis. Whatever sperm is produced by the male bee, that is by the process of mitosis. So, the females are diploid. They can undergo meiosis to produce egg. But the males are haploid. They can produce sperm only by mitosis. So, when it is time for the queen bee to mate, because she is the one that is responsible for producing offspring, right? So, when it is time for the queen bee to mate, she will mate with many male drone bees. Not just one or two, but she will mate with many male drone bees. And she has a special pouch-like structure in her body in which she can store the sperm she collects from the male bees. After that, she lays eggs. The eggs are produced by the process of meiosis and they are haploid. So, once she lays the eggs, here is where the sex is determined in honeybees. Some eggs are fertilized by the male sperm, whereas some are not. So, these eggs that are fertilized by the male sperm would be diploid, right? The eggs that are not fertilized would still be haploid because fertilization has not happened. The eggs that have been fertilized, that underwent fertilization and are diploid would result in female bees. This would then restore the diploid nature of the female bees. But the eggs that were never fertilized, that were always haploid, they would grow to become male bees. So, their haploid nature is still retained. So, these male bees that are formed from haploid eggs form through a process known as Parthenogenesis. In parthenogenesis, no fertilization takes place. The organism is always haploid. It develops through the process of mitosis. The egg develops through the process of mitosis to give rise to male haploid bees. So, this is how gender is determined in honeybees. With this, let me tell you a few weird facts about honeybees. Males can never have fathers. Weird, right? But it makes sense, doesn't it? Males are formed from haploid eggs, which are laid by the queen bee. She is female. So, males can have a mother, but they can never have fathers. But they can have grandfathers. How? Consider this queen bee, Rani. She gave birth to this male bee. Let's call him Raj. So, Raj has a mother, Rani. But Rani would have had a father, right? Because female bees are always formed from fertilization between the egg and the sperm. So, Rani would have had a father. Let's call him Raja. So, Raja is technically Raja's grandfather. So, males have grandfathers but no fathers. Similarly, males can never have sons. They can only have grandsons. Take Raja here again. He can give rise to only female bees because the sperm and egg fertilize. So, he can give rise to only Ranis. And Rani can eventually give birth to male haploid Rajas. So, males can never have sons and they can only have grandsons. Quite interesting about sex determination in honeybees, isn't it? There is another way by which sex can be determined in honeybees. And that is determined by something known as the complementary sex determiner or the CSD gene. Now, how does this work? So, this gene, this complementary sex determiner gene has several alleles. Let's say this is the gene A. It has several alleles A1, A2, A3 and so on. The females as we know are diploid and are always heterozygous for this gene. So, we have a queen bee here. She might have A1 and A2. 
When she mates with multiple male drones, she is going to store a lot of the sperm, right? And male drones, as we know, are haploid or hemizygous for this gene because there's only one copy present. It can be A1, it can be A2, it can be A3, etc. So when gametes are being formed, the queen bee can give either A1 or A2. So when the gamete, the egg, fuses with a sperm containing a different allele than this one, so that it gives rise to another heterozygous genotype, say this A1 and this A2, A1 and A2, then this would develop into a female. And because males form without being fertilized, right? So they will still be hemizygous or haploid. So it can be either A1 or A2, they'll still be males. So if it is heterozygous, it is female. And if it is hemizygous, it is always male. What about the case when it is homozygous? Say the egg containing this A1 allele fuses with the sperm containing this A1 allele. So that would be A1 and A1, right? Which would be homozygous. In this case, the homozygous develops into a male, which will be diploid. This is the only case where males are diploid. When the CSD gene is homozygous at its locus, A1 and A1, both alleles are the same and the CSD gene is homozygous, the diploid zygote then develops into a male. But this male has no role to play in the hive. It is not a worker bee. It is not a male drone bee. Males are incapable of undergoing meiosis, remember? This male cannot produce sperm either. For that reason, these homozygous diploid males are killed off at the embryo stage itself. So they do not survive beyond the embryo stage, but they are formed in some cases because of the homozygous nature of this complementary sex determiner gene.